see in front of us, we have a beer from Stillwater Artisanal Ales out of Baltimore, Maryland, US of A. Yay, yay. So what does that mean? Hell yes. It's time to go local. That's right, guys. DJ's going local yet again with another beer out of Baltimore, Maryland, US of A. Yay, yay. And as I mentioned, it's one from Stillwater Artisanal Ales, our local gypsy brewer. That's right. Even though this beer was actually brewed and bottled in Colorado, Stillwater is out of Baltimore. And they have their bar here called Of Love and Regret, which is a really cool place. Now, at that bar last year in 2015, when they brewed this beer, um, one thing we couldn't get hardly because it went so fast was Goes Gone Wild. At the time, Goes Gone Wild, which is our beer for today, in case I didn't mention. Anyways, <sighs> is a Goza or Wild Ale that originally was a collaboration with Westbrook. And this is actually Westbrook's Goza rep recipe that has been modified. So let's get into the, you know, kind of particulars about this rotating serving. Clocks in at 4.3% ABV and 5 whopping IBUs. Not a surprise for the style. That's how it goes with Goza. So for hops in this, it's been used Citra and Amarillo and others. The Citra and Amarillo are the dry hop. I'm not sure what hops they used in the Westbrook Goza because I don't believe they say, but you know what? That is what it is. The thing that makes it special is that they're using Citra and Amarillo as the dry hops. Now, for malt in this beer, they're using wheat, of course, because it's a wheat beer base, and others. We don't know what the others are. If it tastes good, I don't really care. So, for yeast in this, they're using German ale, and also for, as a kind of, a, you know, sort of bacteria, they're using lactobacillus and various strains of Brettanomyces or Brett. So, this is really a goes, go, goes out gone wild or goes gone wild, however the hell you want to say it, because they put that wild yeast strain in there. So, it's time to pop the top on this bad boy, get it in our lovely tulip glass today, and tell you how wild I'm going to go over goes gone wild or goes hug gone wild, whatever the hell you want to say it. Or how, whatever. I need beer. Boom. Big hits off the top. Plenty of cannon smoke and not at all collectible crown. Wow. The Citra hops, they're like orange, are blasting off of this. This beer came, just came out, I think, a couple weeks ago, a time of recording. So, you know what? Let's get it in the glass. I'm, I'm ready. I've been waiting for a year to get my hands on this beer, and it really pissed me off that I couldn't get a beer that was from one of my local gypsy brewers um, because of the, I guess, limitations of Westbrook's brewing capacity, maybe. So, that might be why um, Stillwater decided to switch to a you know, better place to brew more capacity. Anywho, look at that beer, guys. That's gorgeous in the glass. It's a really light yellow color that is totally hazy. It looks like a classic wheat beer in the glass. We got a solid one finger, was almost two fingers, head on this beer, quickly dissipating. Goes to do that because of the adjuncts that are in this beer as well, which are salt and coriander. Didn't mention that before, but just in case you don't know, as I, as you can see, I've drank a couple of so I know about the salt and coriander. And, um, at this point, I guess maybe I'm going to have to start like a playlist on Goza's because it's one of my favorite styles. When I want a refreshing beer to crush, I'm down with a Goza. I'm, I'm going to even brew one. So, anywho, really lovely looking beer in the glass. I'm surprised the heads lasted that long. The only other Goza out of all these that I've, that I've drank or have been too evil, which is good buddies with the folks who own, the guy who owns Stillwater. I believe his name is Dan. Um, but anyways... Um, good buddy, so maybe they gave him a little bit of influence on this recipe back in the day, too. But that beer had really good head retention, and this one does for what it is. So, really lovely, looking super hazy wheat beer in the glass. Let's see what's up with the aroma. Damn, this is all about the Citra and Amarillo. Big orange zest, grapefruit zest. A ton of tropical fruit up in here. Mmm, Pineapple. That could be coming from the bread too. Sometimes we'll get some pineapple notes off the bread, but lovely pineapple aroma. Mm, the saltiness is there, but it's way downplayed in the nose compared to the Westbrook goes up. And some of the other ones that I have, a lot of times goes up give me that like smell of sort of a, like a, what do I want to say, like a margarita and like sea foam. This isn't that. The hops are big and present in this beer. A bit of mango. Wow, papaya. Tons and tons of citrus fruit, tangerine, grapefruit, orange, a little bit of lemon. Mm, and now the salinity is coming up a little bit as the heads died down almost fully. And a hint of that coriander in the background as I'm digging. Mm, smells freaking delicious. I'm ready to dive in, guys. Cheers. Let's see if I'll go so wild. <laughs> 
Mmm, yum. Wow. Look at that, guys. Beautiful glass lacing. Mmm. That is a freaking crushable beer. Wow. For 4.3%, the flavor is massive in this brew. Mmm. Right up front, you get tartness from the lactobacillus, lemony tartness. After that, the hops are complementing that lemony tartness with orange and tangerine and papaya. And there's a little slight bit of like funk in here. Very slight. It's not big. This isn't some like big Brett bomb. Mm, no one time that may happen. Well, when I poured before I poured this, I had a good bit of sediment down the bottom. That's probably wheat sediment. And maybe some of that Brett down on the bottom. Maybe they gave it a hit and bottle conditioned it. Mm, but man. So crushable. The salt is what I would say is the perfect level. For me, Westbrook goes up, the salt level is too high. The salt level in this beer is more of that the, of Rittergutz and these other brews here. I'd say Rittergutz and Old Pro Goats are more along the lines of the salinity of this one. And maybe the two evil too, the or the, the geyser goats from Evil Twin and Two Rose. But wow, man, this is this is the tastiest goats I, I think I've had so far, man. It's Big flavor. The hops are big and present. There's no, really no perceptible bitterness to this beer. The only thing that's counterbalancing the sweetness of the malt is the tartness and the big hop flavor. And the, even the tartness is in check. There's really good balance between the salt, tart, and hop flavors that are in this beer being juxtaposed against the wheat malt. Mm. So, so easy to crush this beer. As you can see, I've jammed down almost this whole tulip here, and it's it's just like you can you can sit back, excuse me, handling a bomber of this is no problem. I was worried since it was in bomber format that it was going to be too tart or too much, and this is not that. I can crush this beer as much as I can I can crush the Rittergutzgotza, uh, and in fact maybe even a bit more because the tartness is more in check and playing along with the hoppy notes and the, the hoppy flavors that are in this beer with the salt and coriander and other stuff going on. But damn, you hear I'm freaking geeking out on this brew because it's fucking tasty. I drink this again any day of the week. So, oh, am I showing my cards that I like this? Anywho, let's grade this beer, right? Well, Rake Beer gives it, bam, 100, A+. Plus, hashtag A+. Plus. Beer Advocate gives it 96. Boom, high A. Untapped is giving it 4.24 caps, which is high A. I'm going A plus on this, guys. For a Goza, I'm going 98. This beer freaking rocks. I drink it any day of the week. There's awesome balance in this brew. And if you drank as many Goza as I've had, I've drank many more than this, too. Other people's that I just haven't reviewed. But, man, this is a great example of a take on the style and a play on the style. And I believe it one-ups the Westbrook Goza, which for, in my palate... A lot of folks dig it, is too salty, and comes off to me a little bit as kind of sort of like foodie juice. Mm -hmm. That's my opinion, but this beer is very well made, and it's kind of like, in some ways, Goza and a, like a like a IPA, like a low ABV IPA, maybe a session IPA, had a baby. And that's what you get. You get Westbrook Goza. There you go. The baby, maybe she had the baby, you know, because Stillwater, I was reading somewhere, they were saying, you know, hey, these are the guys that have mastered the art of the label. If you look at Stillwater's labels, Stillwater's also mastered the art of the label. But maybe this is this chick's baby, this beer. I don't know. So, have you had Goza Gone Wild or Goes Gone Wild, however the hell you want to say it? Yeah, let me know what you think. I like the quid pro quo and the back and forth because that makes more, me more beer geekier and more smarter. I also want to know if you can think locally, drink locally. I'm drinking locally today from my gypsy brewer, baby, here in Baltimore, Maryland, U.S. of A. Yay, yay. Are you doing your part, too? I hope so. Damn, you should be because that's what keeps this craft beer movement growing, you know? And keep getting more diversity and takes on a style that was almost dead. There was basically Leipziger and Rento Cozzo Rego now left, and that was it. And us Americans here said, damn, that tastes good. Let's bring it back. And boom, we got this beer, which is a freaking tasty-ass brew. So, to the next DJ Brew Dude, thanks a to each and every one of you for watching. Please remember to late, rate the late. Hmm, hold on. There you go. Rate, comment, subscribe, and smash that like button. Because that, along with more than one bomber, 
for sure because this tastes freaking awesome of Gold's Gone Wild. Puts my happy face on. So till then, I got nothing but a big bunch of local drinking love for you. And you know what's coming? That's right. Big